everyone, welcome to your favorite motivational show, Who Has a Right to be Motivated? And you can see with me, I have yet another exciting guest. Uh, we've been touring the city of Kano in the last couple of hours together. Um, is no other person than Chime Asonye. Did I get the pronunciation right? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Good job. Good job. Because I used to call it Asonye. Asonye. Hey, but how do you yeah. how do you pronounce it? You just call me Chime. Okay. So, so, well, so just <laughs> Chime, Chime Asonye. Chime Asonye. Yes. He's a development consultant. Has traveled wide. And he's had impact projects across different cities and communities. Uh, Chime has served as formerly as the special assistant to the Abia State Governor on SDGs. He's also played a couple of roles around development in Nigeria. He's currently at Abuja Global Shape. Uh, AGS. AGS for yeah, life. For life. Uh, you know, for life. Impacting our community. Like for life. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll quickly jump into. Uh, the interview, sure. and which I think you're also excited about. Yes, so my first right. question is very straightforward. It's introduction. Okay. This is what I know about you. Sure. What I just said. Sure. But who in the world is Chime yeah. Asonye? Like right from Chime's own mouth. So okay. let's go. Well, he's not the king of motivation. <laughs> that is the one and only MD. I continue to have a right to be motivated. You do, you do have. And if I'm not motivated, then I don't know. I come to MD <laughs> to help me. But um, yeah, my name is Chime Asonye. Uh, I basically um, focus on development, mm -hmm. especially development in Africa. Uh, my career essentially started off with... Um, I'm concentrating on the relationship between the West and Africa. Mm. So when I graduated from college, I started working on Capitol Hill. Mm. For instance, I was working for a congressman on the subcommittee on Africa and global health, good. Uh, which was a good premiere of understanding Western policy towards Africa. And then later on, it focused more and more on Africa mm. and in Nigeria. Mm. So I came here, I started working in the Nigerian presidency. Um, I started working... Um, Subnationally, as an advisor to the governor, and then regionally, working on um, the economic development and peace building in the Niger Delta region with the Ministry of Niger Delta ministers and governors, mm. etc. And there's some other things in between there. You know, I was working at a democratic governance forum that supported um, work in Africa, and I've been a commissioner in Washington, D.C., and things like Ooh. that. But really, at the end of the day, it was um, how do I make public institutions work for people? Yeah. And how do I, and it graduated to how do I do that more on the ground? Um, you know, I was working in the diaspora before, but I wanted to work with the, where the people are, where the challenges are, and where you can see your impact. So I've been working um, to make that happen. And um, the last thing I would say about that is that as I've been pursuing this work, it's really been about um, evidence and development. Mm. So my interest in this area started off at, in high school when okay. I was um, joining the debate team. Okay. So I would debate, I would compete. So evidence-based policy research, mm -hmm. trying to compete have been things that continue to push me. And I continue to compete with myself to see how I can uh, support development in Nigeria, Abuja, and hopefully learn one or two things in Kano here. Yeah. Where we are right now. Yeah. Um, to support my insight and my efforts going forward in the future. Yeah, perfect. So um, just like you mentioned, that we're shooting life in Kano, Nigeria. Yeah. It's exciting. First time here. Yeah, first time I'm in so Kano. I'm excited. <laughs> Honestly. It's super interesting. Yeah. Uh, we'll show you around town tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. We had an amazing talk today. Yeah, talk today with, with the Yali Network. Yes, Yali uh, Kano, Kano, amazing young... Yeah. Northern change agents. Exactly. Sure okay, so let's move to the next question sure. real quickly. This is acting like it's fast. Okay. You know, um, you are a development consultant yeah. interested in developing communities and you play your part, you know, uh, however you can. Um, your career path today, uh, what you're doing, if you flash back to when you were younger, you know, trying to choose. Uh, I know you studied abroad. Yes. And so that, that could have like, actually influenced how you turned out but everybody's got to choose somehow. The people right now are trying to make a decision for themselves, for their kids, uh, brothers and sisters. Okay, what should they do? Like art class, science class, you know, all of those conversations. Mm -hmm. So as far as you're concerned, um, what you're doing today, was it planned all along or was it coincidental somehow? So your career path. 
Tell me about it. Yeah, my career path was definitely a combination of intention mm -hmm. and um, circumstance. Okay. If I can put it like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the objective of my career is yeah. what needs to be the focus. Mm -hmm. And that is what I would encourage other people. What, is, what do you want to happen? And for me, the objective of my career is how can I enhance the public sector, mm. right, to be more responsive to citizens? Mm. How can that I be the link um, to make these sacred institutions, as which I consider them, mm -hmm. when they have social contracts, when they do things like provide basic necessities and security, sacred institutions wield their power towards citizens in furtherance of their social contracts. So that's the objective, mm. right? And that objective changes based on circumstance. Right. So for me, I started off um, um, studying political science, sorry, studying philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought that the-, the What school was that? I went to the University of Illinois in Urbana okay. Champaign, it's, it's in America. Mm. Um, and I started off thinking um, the most interesting questions were not about the policies, but what did the policies tell us about society? Mm -hmm. You know, what did they say about the representations and assumptions about what we think is important? Mm -hmm. And as I got into the, as I, I was about to graduate, and I looked at the market, the market wasn't about philosophy mm. because philosophy is humanities, mm -hmm. like English is humanities. Mm -hmm. What the market for political scientists or economics or social well, social development was all social studies. Mm. So I had to stay in school longer mm. and get a political science degree mm. to complement my philosophy, which is the circumstances dictating you know, what I studied and work. And mm. then I started working in Capitol Hill in America and I felt like it was good, but the change was really on the ground. Mm -hmm. There's only so much you can do behind the desk in Washington, D.C. Yeah. If I wanted to see the change, I had to go to Africa. So mm -hmm. the circumstances of what I wanted to do impacted my decision to go ultimately to Nigeria. And I, but I was very intentional about what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to work on MDGs. So yeah. when I moved to Nigeria, I worked in the presidency using working on the Millennium Development Goals. And then afterwards, um, the politically, the during the election cycle 2015, the focus then wasn't on the federal government. Mm -hmm. That's when we had um, the rise of APC, yeah. you know, Rotimi and Michi, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, what these state governors are going to do, etc. So my focus changed from working in the presidency at the federal level to where I thought the action was, which is state government. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started working as an advisor to the governor. And then we hit the recession. Mm -hmm. Remember 2016, 2017, yeah. we mm -hmm. had the largest recession mm -hmm. and we had the, um, a recession that we haven't had in 25 years. Mm -hmm. So my focus changed up from governance mm -hmm. because I thought that elections and leadership were important and then sustainable development that I thought were important with the MDGs and SDGs and it changed to economic development. Mm -hmm. So I started working at Partnership Initiatives for Niger Delta mm -hmm. where we supported development uh, in the nine Niger Delta states, um, helping with business linkages, um, supporting agricultural value change, mm -hmm. handling with end-to-end -end markets and also doing peace building um, and working with governments to string that economic development. So all those things were informed by what is the policy environment, mm. right? How can I be more effective in trying to understand governance at different levels? So now I've done lo local government, I've done federal government, I've done regional government. Mm. I don't know what the future holds, mm. but um, I think that I'll continue to learn lessons that will help piece together my story. It's never static, yeah. but the objective of trying to support the public mm. um, has been know, always there. It's always there. So so I think the point here is um, as life happens, mm. there's always going to be um, a needed intention and then circumstances would define how the intention plays out. So exactly. if you're trying to decide whether arts class, science class for your kid, I think what it should be about is the objective, the general objective. Pro objective of what kind of problem would they be solving in the world? And then that should lead to how the choices come through. Yeah. So it's not about a particular cause. You know, people have been cast into, you know, segments. So you're, you're an art student, and so you can't do anything sciences. But somehow you need some things from sciences, you need some things from arts. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? So it's about the problem we're trying to solve, not about the class, yes, you know, exactly. uh, as defined by school. Yeah. You know, so um, thank you for sharing. We're going to the next question. Sure. And as you can guess, the further we go, the more personal the questions get. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for you. So question number three I'm is on the hot seat. You're on the hot seat now. <laughs> The, the third question is about self-motivation. Okay. Yeah, so uh, when life happens, 
to you and it does to everybody because a lot of people think that when you're up there um, you don't get to feel pain again you know like it's just so sorted out yeah. everything you just have everything at your back and call you just pow, 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 you press three buttons no problems. you know and then food shows yeah. you press three buttons and then a, an airplane shows to pick you up uh, it doesn't happen like that always yeah the rich also cry you know everybody gets punched in the face and exactly. once in a while yeah so when this happens how do you personally pick yourself up well I mean that's a great question I've had so many challenges in my life mm. and um, you know, um, I think that, you know, one of the most challenging times, and I didn't even mention, we've been talking about I'm a development practitioner, I've been in government, etc. but we didn't mention I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer, <laughs> I'm a doctor of law, mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, d getting my law degree was one of the most difficult periods of my, just academically, the things that was going on with my family and everything mm -hmm. like that, and just personally, um, leaving Nigeria to go and get it. So there was a lot going on. It was a struggle. Mm. You know, it was a struggle, and and one of the things that really helped push me during that period was um, music. Mm. Um, was music. I um, the 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 aesthetics and beauty really, I think, impact you know yourself. So mm. your your lived environment yep. impacts how you experience the space. And um, having the music walk with me in my headphones mm. helped me live, navigate, and survive law school in a way that made it more comfortable for me, um, gave me energy to go to school, and even now, mm -hmm. I use music as a tool to support my efforts, uh, whether it's politically or just sustain my energy, because we all know Nigeria is very taxing. Mm -hmm. The place, eh, hey, man, mm -hmm. hey, this, place, this place won't kill somebody. It won't kill somebody. It won't kill someone. So I use music to continue to inspire myself to do, continue to work, mm -hmm. um, give myself the energy to move, and um, also use it as a tool to think about how can we engage in revolutionary efforts. I have a um, a project called Songs for Change. Mm, songs for Change, I know that. Yeah, so every week or so we send mm. out a new song mm. focused on advancing Nigeria and Africa. Mm. And it, it's a tool that helps connect people even beyond language. Yep, you know yep. what I mean? Connect different nationalities, etc. So we can think about how we can push forward. So mm. that continues to motivate me um, all the time. Yeah. So I continue to push forward. Also, music and, and songs, specific songs that, you know, lyrically, and uh, challenging lyrically, you know, um, motivating. Yes. That's stuff that I would, I would love, loved to explore, like your playlist, but okay. it goes beyond it's the scope okay. of the show. It's okay. <laughs> so, can, hey, they can find, you can, you can look at Songs for so Change, you can hashtag, it. Hashtag, hashtag Songs, songs for, for Change on Instagram. On Instagram. And then we'll Follow probably be able to Yeah, Chimea Sonye. Look, look for Songs for Change there. Exactly. So at this point, we'll take a quick break. Okay. And when we're back, we're going to be exploring the ideas of mentorship, Books and if Chimi has a favorite quote to share with us, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's still your favorite motivational <laughs> show. Who has a right to be motivated? Now we're moving to the next question, which is about mentorship. Okay, I think I can handle this one. Yeah, you I should be able to do it. So, <laughs> mentorship is something really critical, particularly for young people who are watching us. Yes. Um, there's this very favorite quote by Isaac Newton. It was attributed to Isaac Newton. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that, if I've been able to see further than my peers, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes. You know, so that's Newton giving credit to everybody in front of him. Uh, you know, learning from other people's work, you know, seeing how stuff are done. So, in your opinion, what do you think about mentorship? Yeah. Do you have mentors that are probably watching? So, mention their names if you can. Okay. Well, mentors, if you're watching, uh, my name is Shime. I hope I'm doing well <laughs> and uh, I'm doing proud by you. I think mentorship is so important. Mm -hmm. um, I think mentorship is, is so important because I don't think I would have gotten to a lot of where I've gone without mentors. And... Um, and I think that people think of mentorship maybe a little bit differently than I do. Mm. I think that people think of a very formal relationship. This is my mentor and this is my mentee. But I get mentorship and all, I get mentorship from my friends. Mm. You know what I mean? From peers. There might, I might be practicing for a job interview and when somebody sits me down and they're in an industry and they do practice interviewing with me, mm. to me that's mentorship. Mm. When someone reviews my essay for law school mm. and they're my friend or they're a colleague, 
to me, that's mm, mentorship, mentorship, right? Mm. When somebody um, continues to excel mm. and just takes the time to talk to me mm. after their talk, mm. to me, that's mentorship. It's those little, little things. Mm. Um, in America, sometimes we call them informational interviews, mm. but um, it doesn't have to be a static, this is my mentor, this is my mentee. So I call a lot of people my mentors and maybe they don't even know. Mention two of them, please. Um, okay, let me... I I'll call Ndidi Noele. Okay, Ndidi Noele. Yeah, who um, founded Leap Africa. Oops, Leap Africa. Yes, mm. uh, which is a youth organization. And now right. she's um, involved in, with a lot of business pursuits, etc. Mm. She just got appointed to the foundation of... Um, uh, I think it's Rockefeller. Oh, for instance, fantastic! And I call her a mentor. She sees me. She's kind of family. She's a family friend, really. Mm -hmm. But she sees me. I see her at like the Nigerian Economic Governance Forum and different things like that. But to me, she's a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, she's so a shout out, Indidi. Indidi, thank you so much. The next person. Uh, the next person, uh, Amina Mohammed. Amina Muhammad, Amina J. Muhammad. Amina Muhammad, the Jim, deputy, deputy UN Secretary General. Secretary General. Yes. Mm. Uh, she was in transition when I was studying in her office. Great. Um, and um, when she was a special advisor, that's the first office I worked in. It was her office um, mm. um, when she was um, senior special assistant to the president on MDGs, and then she. Uh, was leaving and then she ended up going teaching at Columbia and then becoming a special advisor on you know the the next phase of the MDG SDG movement and now and then Minister of Environment and then uh, Deputy UN Secretary General you know and I, every time I see her I tell her that she's my mentor yeah um, but she was one of my inspirations for coming back to Nigeria in the mm. first place mm. um, I was working at IRI mm. um, after I was working on Capitol Hill I worked at a, a democratic governance organization called the International Public Institute. Okay. So they basically did things like um, election observations on behalf of America. Mm. They did things like um, supporting political parties and um, civil society and advocacy Across projects. Across the world. Across the world. And I worked in Africa. I worked on sub South Africa. I worked on um, Uganda and Zimbabwe at mm. the time. And there was a video that IRI was doing featuring women in government mm. and they featured Amina Muhammad mm. and I was just like this is Nigeria's Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. she she was so bold poised and affirmative about her vision and I, I told myself and that she's brilliant she's brilliant she's yeah. brilliant she and she's brilliant. committed to youth yes um you know as a every as an all everyday youth yeah. for, um, <laughs> youth, forever. A, youth forever <laughs> Um, and she's committed to youth. Um, I mean, every time she comes to Nigeria, she meets with youth organizations, sure. etc. So she, I, I saw a video of her. I said, this is Nigeria's Hillary Clinton. I went to work with her. I quit my job and mm -hmm. I started working for her a mm -hmm. couple months later. I mm -hmm. mean, that was that's the story wow. of me coming back. And um, you mentioned two. I'm going to stop there. But I also want to notice, point out that my two mentors were women, mm -hmm. um, which proves the capacity, um, how... The, their place in um, furthering the agenda and the impact that they have on people. And I think that that's a very core message, especially in Kanu. Yes. Um, you know, in terms of leadership of women, mm -hmm. etc. I was I was there, I gave a talk on art and activism mm -hmm. earlier today mm -hmm. as a tool um, to newly approach governance and policy. And we had some really good, great comments from women, yes. etc. One of the songs I played, one of the ladies knew. She was only the lady knew. Wow. Uh, another song that she was, that another woman was able to break down the characters and the music. Mm. So I think that, um, you know, it's really important. That consciousness. That consciousness is already key. Mm. The final thing I'll say about mentorship is that um, I, you're never too old mm. to become a better mentor. Mm. Um, I... People ask me questions a lot of times, and I and um, I challenge myself. In fact, I wasn't challenged. I was at a retreat with other young people. What? And uh, from Abia, I have an mm -hmm. annual retreat. I'm from Abia. I'm, I want. I'm passionate about the Abia we want and supporting development in Abia. So I meet with young people from Abia every year, and we go through our personal goals. And someone challenged me about being a better mentor. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working actively on it. Um, I have an organization called Niger DC that I'm, I help direct, which has um, amazing, prolific Nigerians from all around the world um, with hubs in Washington DC, Abuja, and Lagos. And that is one vehicle that I use for mentorship to try to share information, to try to help our members uh, pursue. So I really have 
um, committed myself these next six months to put more energy in, um, you know, creating the foundation for So how do you spell that? Nija DC. Nija DC. N-A-I-J-A. DC, DC capitalized. Okay, DC, yeah. District of Columbia. It started as District of Columbia, but now it's Niger Diaspora Connect. So, oh. Diaspora, let's rise up. <laughs> let's push Diaspora. We can make things happen yeah, in this generation. Yeah, we can actually push it because a lot of people um, need inspiration. They need people to look up to, and yes. that would be a good platform. Exactly. Okay, so let's move to the next question, right. which is about books. Okay. You know, uh, yes. we are gradually. Moving we're to just in a library. Say so what? We're just at a library. Yeah, we're, we're just, just at, at a library. library. That's what the Kanu talk. Yes, yes, and there's even there are even books are all yeah. around us. Okay. And so, but the age of social media is distracting people yes. from reading, mm. yes. and reading can be done in a couple of ways now. You yes. could read audio books. You could actually do all of this uh, summarized books. Yes. Uh, exactly. There are applications online that help you summarize books into like 15 minutes audio. Mm. You know, a 15 minute summary of what the entire book is about. Mm. You know, so you could read. Plenty of books in a day if you want. Uh, but let's talk about your favorite books. Sure. A lot of books have shifted your consciousness uh, you, or, or they've affected your orientation, orientation positively. Yeah. You know. So what are your two greatest books? Recommend. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make a recommendation. The, let me preface this question. First of all, it's a great question about books. A lot of people don't ask about books and we need to be more intentional about reading. But a lot of what I read right now is nonfiction. Yeah, um, you know, there's an age you get to. Yeah, you get an age, age, and there's so much information, whether it's about conditional cash transfers or um, petroleum governance or Nigeria's history. There's so much information that you want to equip yourself from. So I'm, I want to intentionally not mention any of those type of books. Okay. Um, because those weren't the things that started my trajectory. They're where I am right now. Mm -hmm. um, the two books I'll mention um, that helped shape me. Um, one is called Red Wall. It's mm. actually a series. Red Red Wall. Wall. Yes. If you've heard of like The Hobbit, okay. Think of The Hobbit if it was for animals. Mm. So it's anthropomorphic, which is basically animals that speak and mm. talk and have a lot of human characteristics. Mm. But it was really an adult children's fantasy book. Mm. So um, you remember you, the author? Brian Jackies. Okay, Brian Jackies. Yeah, okay. Brian Jackies. So Brian Jackies would go off and uh, write about this fantasy world where these animals would go off in adventures and usually they had to they started in an abbey mm -hmm. in a woodland forest mm -hmm. and they would have to save their community or they would have to go off and save others so um and the reason it really struck to me was that it was a series it was like i think there's like over 20 novels if i mm. have memory serves me correct and i read all of them well wow. and um it was just the fantasy the the ability to think outside of a preconceived notion of this is what the world is, this is how it can be. Mm -hmm. It helped me think outside of the box and think anything was possible. Yeah. Um, if animals can do it, why can't we do it? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if animals can save the world, why can't we save the world? That's so um, I think it was a fantasy of there. And then the second one is uh, a book that we all probably have read mm. called 1984. Mm, 1984. Yes. You know, I'm trying to remember. The, author, the author's escaping me. But yeah, he's a popular author. Yes. Yeah. He's the same author that wrote, uh, what was the name of his book? Um, Animal Farm. And, yes, he's yes, the yes, same yes, author. yes, yes. Is so, it T.M. Lewis? Huh? No, it's not. It will come to me. It will come. It will come. Let's go. But basically, the, oh, this Orwellian, Orwellian. George Orwell. George Orwell. There you George, go. Yes, George I don't Orwell. Know <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't. It's, yeah, it's it's well. But the... This Orwellian dystopia, mm -hmm. where the state was controlling and surveilling everything, mm -hmm. there was a thought police, there was Big Brother, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and then there was this guy who was, um, you know, there trying to navigate, really despised the system, but was a member of the system. So one of the things that um, why that spoke to me was because it gave me a healthy distrust of stratification and mm -hmm. sedimentation of the state. Like state government mm. in general, usually, you know, when it accumulates too much power mm -hmm. and the citizens don't have things like free press, mm. they don't have things like liberal speech, right? Mm. They don't have things like activists, they don't have things like information exchange and technology, right? You really have power sedimentation mm -hmm. that can stamp out difference. Mm. So that healthy distrust of the state government 
is one of the reasons why I want to be an activist to help open up the public sector, mm -hmm. right? I want to be a contact, a link, that activist inside mm. that other people can use because I know the language and the tools of the state government, etc. Mm -hmm. And I also think that we need little little things like refuge and mm -hmm. asylum, mm -hmm. things that state governments sometimes they don't want to allow, mm. right? Uh, we need these type of things because it's these other people from these other worlds that help us move forward. So definitely 1984, definitely the Red Wall series. All right. Thank you very much for recommending your two books. We'll flash that on the screen mm -hmm. and uh, we'll move to the last question. Last question. The very, very last question. Oh, wow. The king are, question. Are you ready for this The one? king of motivation question. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. I think so. Let me brush myself off first. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm good to go. Okay, this question is about quotes. Quotes, You okay. know, there are words that turn you uh, up, all the way up. That, that next thing, level. That turn you to the next yeah. level. There are words that turn you down. Mm. You just hear them, you know, because words have power. Yes. Words have life. Mm. They have a force behind them. Yeah. So, and the combination of words in a way that is really unique, mm. you know, sort of like quotes really help people to move to... You know, to just keep the, get, the day going, just keep the day going, you know, keep life moving on. So, what's that quote for you? I'm going to give you three. Just one. I can give you one. You can only give me one. I can give you one. I'm it could be yours. I'm gonna give you it could two. be something you put up. Okay. I'm you can only give me one. I can only give you one. Okay. So, I will give you, let me, I want to give you a quote about motivation, but I'm not going to give it that one. Whatever. It doesn't have to be motivational. No, it's the, I, I'm the favorite to, quote. I'm going to, I'm with my favorite quote right now. Right now. Right yeah. Now. Let's see. Right now. 2020. Um, is from Nipsey Hussle. Okay, Lipsy. Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. You know, Nipsey Hussle was an American rapper. Okay. That was unfortunately, uh, he was shot dead recently. Whoops. Um, he was from the California area. Mm. And it's really sad because we have Kobe Bryant now and mm. we have Nipsey Hussle. Mm. Um, so while there's a lot of quotes that really resonate, there's a thing that he said where he was talking about fatherhood. Mm. And he was talking about what the definition of fatherhood was and the definition of, of what being a man is. And he says that to be a man is to be thorough. Mm. To be a man is to be thorough. To be a man is to be thorough. That um, if he looks at, he's read in places like the Bible and other um, places that he says women and children can be careless, men can't be careless. Mm. Um, that men need to be, uh, make sure that everybody's mouths are fed. Mm. Make sure that the creed, T's are dotted, make mm. sure that that's follow through, mm. right? Make sure that they, they can provide, mm. right? Make sure that they're detail oriented. So the questions that people don't ask, if we're going on a trip, how do people eat, right? How do we get, how do we provide for our family? And those little things that we let slip, you know, at the end of the day, they come to issues. Those small things that we let slip here, 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 we don't pay attention to, they're usually the ones that catch up to us at the end of the day. They accumulate. And they accumulate. So for me, this year, I've, I've really elevated that quote, to be a man is to be thorough. Mm -hmm. In all my affairs, whether it's my finances, my professional life, my love and romantic life, mm -hmm. if I want to be, if I really want to achieve my goals, if I really want to be a man of my kingdom, I need to make sure I'm thorough about my affairs, mm -hmm. I'm not careless in any way, mm -hmm. and I'm not letting little things slip. I'm following through on all my objectives mm. that I've set for myself. So uh, this is fantastic. Yeah. It's been a very motivational experience right here in the room. And it's been your host, MDT Amir, the King of Motivation. Super excited to be having Chime Asonye. You know, uh, <laughs> in the building. Um, so at this point. Thank you so much for watching this far. You are a hero for being attentive and learning one or two things from this episode. And as we always wrap it up, you know that as MDT Amir, the king of motivation, I have a right to be motivated. Chime Asanye, obviously, <laughs> you know, he's been dishing out motivation since, since we started. He has a right to be motivated. Definitely. So guess who has a right to be motivated? You, you have, have a right, right to, to be, be motivated. motivated. Until the next episode, stay motivated and cheese. Bye-bye.